The following is a presentation of the IHSA Television Network. Trophies have already been given out here at Redbird Arena with Montini taking on the Class 3A Championship, beating Hillcrest again. Having fun at Redbird Arena. We'll throw the ball up next for the 4A title coming up on the IHSA Television Network. America's original March Madness continues here at Redbird Arena as we get set to crown a Class 4A champion. It is Zion Benton taking on Bolingbrook for the Class 4A title here on the IHSA Television Network. Good evening, everyone. Matt Rodold with you here. Happy to be here for what could be a three-peat or what could be a first-time state champion. And as we send it over to David Patricia, you know, you might have heard this line before. David took a stone out of a bag and slung it, and the Philistine fell to the ground. You guys can explain. I would say to build off of that, you're talking about Zion Benton. Matt Dave Fernhardt along with Patricia Babcock McGraw. Yeah, make no mistake about it. The ZBs, the underdogs in this game, you're talking about the fourth ranked team in the country in Bolingbrook, the preseason pick to win it all. They are looking for a three-peat, that's Bolingbrook. But for each both of these teams, it is a dream. A dream not only to get to this game, but maybe a fulfillment here tonight. Absolutely. Both of these teams are looking to fulfill a dream. Bolingbrook, the pressure has been on all season, number one in the state ranked in the country. They're looking to be the first large school to ever win three state titles in a row. And Zion Benton's just happy to be here. They were happy to win a regional title. So being here with a chance to win a state title is just beyond their wildest dreams. On the other side, you take a look at Zion Benton. Maybe the best player that nobody knew about coming down to this tournament plays for Zion Benton. That's Juanita Robinson. Well, it was Mrs. Robin's neighborhood last night for Zion Benton. Juanita Robinson had the game of her life against Maine South in leading the ZBs to their first state championship in school history. Had 18 points, four steals, three assists, and also hit some big shots down the stretch to help put the game away. She'll need to come up big again tonight. On the other side for Bolingbrook, it's a pair of sisters. They were thinking about going to the same college at one time. They now subsequently are going their different ways. Taylor Tuck and Morgan Tuck for Bolingbrook. Well, this is it for the Tuck sisters. They want their last game together to be a win in the state championship. Taylor Tuck is the senior. She'll be playing at Illinois. She had the big free throw for Bolingbrook last night to put him in the state title game. For Zion Benton, the senior, number five, Helena Rodriguez. For Bolingbrook, a senior, number 24, Fallon Edwards. For Zion Benton, the freshman, number 21, Samantha Rodriguez. For Bolingbrook, a junior, number 30, Kiara Ray. For Zion Benton, a senior, number 23, Juanita Robinson. For Bolingbrook, a junior, number 44, Morgan Tuck. And for Zion Benton, a senior, number 34, Morgan Garrett. Bolingbrook brings the 28-2 record into tonight's game. The Raiders are coached by Anthony Smith in his 10th year with a record of 273 wins and 28 losses. Zion Benton brings a 27-6 record into the game. The ZBs are coached by Tanya Johnson in her second year at the school with a career record of 45 wins and 15 losses. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we ask you to stand. And before our soloist sings the national anthem, we ask you to remember and honor the men and women of the United States Armed Forces serving throughout the world with this moment of silence. Thank you. And now we ask you to join our guest soloist, Elizabeth Banizak, a senior at Carl Sandburg High School, in the singing of our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars Or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming.
And now as the players and coaches wish each other good luck at half court, the IHSA Board of Directors and member schools remind you that we expect and promote good sportsmanship from all athletes, coaches, students, parents, and spectators. We request your cooperation by supporting the participants and officials in a positive manner. Remember to do what's right. Our championship game officials are Jim Bernardi, Rick Cogswell, and John Griffer. Bolingbrook comes into this ball game 28 and 2. This is their starting lineup. You'll notice a change from last night's starting lineup. Fallon Edwards into the ball game to start rather than Taylor Tuck, who at that game winning free throw, of course. We talked about Arian Ma Ariel Massengale, the senior headed to Tennessee. Morgan Tuck, the junior, will play your college basketball at UConn. For Zion Benton, the ZBs come in 27 and 6. We mentioned Juanita Robinson, but keep an eye out for Octavia Crump. She will be a major factor tonight. Morgan Garrett had a solid semifinal game in the win over Maine South last night. Zion Benton, the fifth seed in their sectional. And yet they are here playing a state title. Let's check in before game time with Matt Rodewald. Dave, do you want to know how unfamiliar these guys are, these kids are? 1939 is when the school opened. They only have two second place finishes to show for in any sport. One of them coming in bass fishing in 2009. And of course, you may remember the boys basketball team a couple of years ago in 2008. And their fans are well aware of that, and they have come out in force, and Bolingbrook will get things started. Raiders, one of the top teams in the country. Ariel Massengale, one of the top players in the country. Morgan Tuck with it here. Tuck works on Garrett. And another chance. And Dave, that's two offensive rebounds just in this sequence alone for Bolingbrook. That is Zion Benton's specialty. This team rebounds the ball so well, they are going to have to crash the glass harder than normal against this Bolingbrook team. Bolingbrook has a lot of height, a lot of aggressive players, Division I players who know to, how to go after the basketball. And Zion Benton is also going to have to play that tough, tough defense it's known for as well. Five straight games in the tournament that Zion Benton has held its opponent to under 40 points. Tuck with one of two free throws. This will be a great matchup tonight. Robinson against Massengale. Massengale is right up tight on Robinson. From trouble. Turnover to Massengale. Here come the Raiders. Tuck to the line for two more. Bolingbrook going right to Tuck on these first two possessions. Morgan Tuck really struggled last night in that game against Whitney Young. She was three for 13 from the field, but had a key basket late that really lifted Bolingbrook into this championship game. It's important. It will be important for Bolingbrook to get her going early, get that confidence going early. Not that she lacks her confidence, but she struggled last night. She only had 10 points. She comes in averaging nearly 21 points per game. She's a junior. She won the Miss Basketball Award as a freshman for Bolingbrook a couple of years ago as part of that state championship team. Melina Rodriguez to Robinson. Coach Bolingbrook doing a nice job of playing, making Zion Benton play fast basketball. Nice from Maskell inside to Moore will not go and Garrett with the board. You saw in that last sequence for Zion Benton they were really rushing and Juanita Robinson had to throw up a shot that I don't think that she was comfortable taking at that time. Follow this way will go against Kiara Ray. Ray. Transfer from Wabansi Valley High School started last year for the Warriors, a sectional finalist. Trump with a touch. This is Samantha Rodriguez within number 21. What a night! Samantha Rodriguez had 14 rebounds in the semifinal win. <laughs> Athletic play by Robinson. Presence of mind by Robinson. Falling out of bounds and to get the ball back by knocking it off of Massengale. 
we talk about how important it is going to be for Bolingbroke to get Morgan Tuck going. How about Octavia Crump for Zion Benton? She was plagued with foul trouble last night against Maine South. Spent a lot of time on the bench. She's Zion Benton's leading scorer. She needs to be much more involved in this basketball game. There's an offensive rebound for Crump. Oh, fighting for that basketball. She thought that she was going to have an easy putback, but had to fight to the end there, rolling on the ground to get the ball back. Tuck with the block on Samantha Rodriguez. Oh, Morgan Garrett, number 34 for Zion Ben. I think she came down on her ankle wrong. She's looked like, she looks like she's walking it off. Right at you is Morgan Tuck, the six foot two inch junior with the stuff of Rodriguez. Into Garrett. Crump. Great rebound by Crump. But a great job by Kiera Ray to be right there to rip it away from Crump. Mm -hmm. Tony Smith oh, in his 10th season. Pass. Juanita Robinson, we saw so many great passes from her last game. Many of them went unfinished under the basket by the ZBs, but able to finish there right over the top of the defense. A nice lob pass by Robinson. Edwards had a big night last night. Can't get that one to go. And here come the ZBs. They like to run. Numbers against Robinson. She'll fire away. Now Massengale. Ray open. Wow. She is Dolan Brooks defensive stopper, but she had nine points last night and it looks like she's still hot here tonight. Raiders switch defensively and possession will go to Bolingbroke. Pretty quick pace here in the opening three minutes of play in our 4A championship game. The Raiders, thanks to the three ball from Kiaria Ray, lead this one 6-2. Welcome back to Redbird Arena. So far, the most entertaining matchup here in the state championship game between Bolingbrook and Zion Benton. Probably the little battle between Ariel Massengale and Juanita Robinson. Ariel didn't exactly have the finest offensive performance last night, and tonight she might be most responsible from a defensive standpoint of shutting down Juanita Robinson, who had one of the biggest games in school history. So far, Juanita's not been able to do what she needs to do in the half court. She's been able to get her looks in the open court. Thank you very much, Matt, as the Bolingbrook Raiders will take it into the lineup. For Bolingbrook, Cabriana Capers, number 50, looking to set a screen up top. They get it low to Morgan Tuck. Edwards open. Fallon Edwards. Bolingbrook coming out of the gate, shooting the ball so well, so smooth. Just have quiet confidence about him. Here's Edwards. Top to Massengale, they'll set from there. Tuck, great position inside. Morgan Tuck with five quick points, five of the ten. Bolingbroke points and say quick 10 2 lead. Morgan Tuck is so tough to stop when she gets the ball down low like that. She's strong, six foot two, has great post moves in the paint. And active on both ends, ripping down that rebound. Morgan Tuck making up for that lost time in last night's game. They'll get Robinson with the foul. You get the sense right now this game is going a little bit too quick for Zion Bent in terms of the nerves, the emotions. So Juanita Robinson may be trying to do just a bit too much here in the early going. Yep. Well, they're an up-tempo team, but just to kind of calm the nerves, you know, to kind of keep themselves in check a little bit might not be a bad idea to slow things down just a little bit until they can kind of feel a little bit more comfortable. Right now things are going a little too easy for Bolingbroke. I think that game plan had Morgan Tuck's name written on it. Trump. Her second basket here in the first quarter. Perseverance by Zion Benton. Things did not look good on that play. Able to get out of the trap and get a wide open layup. Ellie Hill, no one a three. A 
Foul will be called on Massengale. That was a great battle coming down the floor. A little head fake. Massengale thought she'd established position right at you. And, and you know, you really have to admire Juanita Robinson. Ariel Massengale has the big resume, the big reputation, and Juanita Robinson's challenging her all the way. Morgan Garrett on the easy bucket inside. Left corner, Ray. She's two for two from three point range. Raiders five of ten from the floor. Just so tough to pinpoint an area of weakness for Bolingbrook. You've got weapons at every position, and everyone on the floor can hurt you offensively. Good job by Crump. Put a body right on Tuck. Oh, great look inside. Sam Rodriguez found Garrett. Good look. Morgan Garrett wide open. Unable to finish there. Samantha Rodriguez. She had a great game yesterday in the rebounding department. Just 5'8", but the freshman pulled down 14 rebounds. It was huge in giving Zion Benton that big rebounding edge over Maine South. That was a key in that basketball game. Real active player, a good passer. You saw that pass there into Morgan Garrett. You mentioned those rebounding numbers. It was a 47 to 26 advantage for Zion Benton over Maine South. Right now, they hold the 7-4 lead in rebounds against Bolingbrook. That's a travel, and it will go the other way. Alan Edwards will come back into the game for Bolingbrook. Allie Hill, who hit a huge three-pointer last night in that semifinal win over Young, will have a seat. Took that extra little hop. And that's a funny play because sometimes you get away with that little extra hop and sometimes you don't. It's just a way that players are able to get a little bit more space between themselves and their defender. You've seen more of that in recent years, but uh, every now and then you get called for it. Tuck from distance. Ten first quarter points from Morgan Tuck and matches her total from last night, and it's an 11-point lead for the Raiders. Nice move by Sam oh, Rodriguez. Great pass. Oh. <laughs> now Massengale. And that will be a carry. Octavia well, Crump cannot believe that that shot didn't go down. She was set up perfectly by Samantha Rodriguez. Those are the plays that Zion Metten is going to have to finish. You cannot afford to miss those bunnies under the basket against a team like Bolingbrook. You have got to maximize all of your very best opportunities against this basketball team. And that whole offensive set was out of sync. Yeah. Another substitution for Bolingbrook. Hill comes back in, the first substitution of the night. For Zion Benton is Kayla Young. She'll replace Samantha Rodriguez. Under a minute to play in your 4A championship. Robinson numbers against her. And she'll get called for the foul up over the back. Second foul for Juanita Robinson. She is not afraid to take it to the hole, though, is she? This looks like a one-on-three. Just kind of forcing the issue a little bit too much, but I like, I like her aggressiveness, though. Not afraid to go to the basket. That's what you got to do against a team like this. You've got to lay it all on the line. You've got to be aggressive. You got to keep pushing it. 
She will watch the last 30 seconds from the ZB bench. Massengale make sure she breaks away from Rodriguez. And with 10 seconds, Massengale will start it with a three. Wow, and well beyond the three-point line. What range by Ariel Massengale. The two-time defending state champs in 4A are playing like it. One quarter in the books. The Raiders looking to three-peat. And they're tripling it up right now on Zion Benton. Waters here at the uh, Redbird Arena, Doug Collins Court, in our state championship game here in Class 4A. Morgan Tuck, a spectacular game so far, doing very well. And we didn't see so much of her doing very well last night, except for the fact that she had the game tying basket in the end of regulation. However, you know, she seems, a she seems to be a matchup problem for anybody, but more so for Zion Benton because they have not seen anyone of that size coming to this point. They may have seen someone in the, in the uh, in Main South. Last night, but the youth and inexperience from Maine South didn't exactly translate into preparing for someone like Morgan Tuck. You're right, man. Tony Smith said, uh, you know what, we're going to go right at it. We want to get our All-Stater and national team member in the flow of it early. And indeed, 10 first quarter points for Tuck. The Morgan Tuck that we saw last night, even though she did come up with one of the key baskets there in the waning seconds, that wasn't the Morgan Tuck that Bolingbroke is, has seen all season. She shoots 60% from the field. She was three for 13 last night. She's used to hitting shots like that, making the layups, the easy layups. And we've seen her show her range today already out on the perimeter. You know, she's playing like the player that is going to be going to Connecticut in a couple of years. Already committed to Connecticut as a junior. One of the top five players in the nation. Leads this team in rebounding. To talk about a tough matchup problem. 6-2. She's got a lot of size, a lot of strength. And just really can get it done from everywhere. She is playing like the Morgan Tech everybody knows at Bowling Road. Robinson better be careful in there. And that is number three. And Tanya Johnson sits over on the Zion Benton bench, legs crossed, hand on her chin as she sees her top guard having a seat. You see Frank Matucci right next to her. Four state titles for those two combined. That's not what those two people imagine. In fact, we saw those two. They ran off four straight championships between them. Two from Matucci at Stevenson, then two more from Tanya Johnson at Loyola in the mid 90s and to late 90s and she wants a timeout. A tough call to have to bring Juanita Robinson out of the game. You know, that's something that Tanya Johnson talked to us about about Juanita Robinson. She's such a high energy player an athletic player but she sometimes loses the focus that Tanya Johnson needs her to have as the primary ball handler of this team with a primary offensive options on this team and you see that it, so far in this game Juanita Robinson has been pressing a little bit too much has been forcing a little bit too much she needs to regain that focus and composure that she had last night against Maine South to really allow Maine uh, to allow Zion Benton to get back into this basketball game Juanita Robinson needs to shoot the ball better and needs to make better decisions but you know what the Bolingbrook defense is so tough they're really forcing her into a, a zone that's just not very comfortable for her right now. Tony Smith breaks his huddle, and that's a very revealing number right there. The 12 to nothing advantage on points off turnovers. Tanya Johnson, you saw her moments ago, 617 career wins, and she was not happy at all. It, it's very interesting. A lot of folks might say, well, boy, you should really just be happy you're here and just, you know, play the 32 minutes. Uh-uh, that's not how right. that young lady works. Well, once you're here, you might as well win it, you know. You kind of get the, the stars have to leave your eyes now. You, I mean, this is serious business now. You make it down here, you might as well you know, perform like a state champion. 
Morgan Franklin is into the game wearing number four for Zion Benton. So it's Helena Rodriguez in the backcourt. And yet another <laughs> ball for our TV announcer. It is three, three catches I have made here in the, what, past two weeks. Yeah. There's a magnet in these hands. Sign you up. These teams need a player with good hands. <laughs> I'm happy where I am, thank you. You're just happy to be here. I uh, did do that. <laughs> well, the job Bolingbrook does defensively, just guarding you one on one, just all over you, right up on you. So difficult just to even get around. I mean, just the intensity that Bolingbrook plays defense with. It's got to be. It's it's got to be frustrating for Zion Button. It's taxing. It's physically exhausting. And you know, look at this, Dave Juanita Robinson back into the ball game. Even though she has those three fouls, I think Tanya Johnson says, you know what, it's now or never. We've got to get some more points on the board. We've got to get in this basketball game if we have any hope of being competitive in the second half. Valen Edwards, everything working for Bolingbrook right now, the 26 to 7 lead. We're a minute and a half into the second quarter. Here comes Edwards. Bolingbrook fills the lane, Tuck finishes it off. 15 points and a clinic being put on yeah. now. Everything working for Bolingbrook. That will be a carry. And you know, some of the things that were working for Zion Benton last night against Maine South, just not there against this tough Bolingbrook defense. You saw the penetration on that last play by Juanita Robinson, a good idea and threading it through, trying to get it to one of her teammates down low, but that bowling break defense just closes in on you so quickly that a passing lane that looks like it's there is closed off a second later. Mass and Gale to Tuck. Morgan Tuck with 15 first half points. In the first 10 minutes of this game will go to the line. Real efficient, five of six from the field. Four or five from the line is Morgan Tuck, 15 total points. We talked about how efficient she has been all season. 60% field goal shooting for Morgan Tuck. So when she gets the basketball, she's taken high percentage shots with a nice touch on the ball. When you get it into her, you feel pretty good about your chances of scoring. Nice catch by her. Robinson right in front of us. Ball is in her hands about 80% of the time here tonight. Great pass. Look at Crump go get it. And those are the kind of plays that can give your team some energy. Zion's got to come up with more of them. Tuck for three. What a show the junior is putting on tonight. That's her sweet spot right at the top there. She's hit two of them now. She has 20 points. And the Bolingbrook Raiders lead at 33 to 9. How frustrating is that, though, if you're a defensive player trying to guard Morgan Tech, you're battling and battling down low. She can step out and hit those three pointers with ease. You just don't know where to guard her. Rodriguez travels before she banks it in. And this time out can't come early enough for Tanya Johnson. She was ready to call one in her own. She gets a media timeout. She'll look at a board and find her team down big to the two-time defending state champs in Illinois. Welcome back to Redbird Arena. You may have noticed somebody who's not on the floor. Uh, this the player who hit the game-winning free throw last night, Taylor Tuck, not playing right now. Just talk to the Bolingbrook bench to find out a little more. That ankle apparently bothering her a little more than she let on last night. But she's not playing so far right now, but she is available to go in, we understand. She may get some playing time here in the second quarter, or maybe even in the second half. Well, we remember last night on that final play with 1.7 seconds left, she got caught up in that foul and she was trying to stretch that ankle so evidently that thing really stiffened up in the last 24 hours. 
This is a game the senior would not want to miss. Capers inside uh, on a rebound. Franklin ahead to Robinson. Five black jerseys back quickly on defense. ZB is looking to reach double digits here in the first half. Bolingbrook with 33 points. They average 74 in the season per game. They scored 50 last night in that overtime win over Whitney Young. From working on Tuck. No offensive flow right now for the ZBs from Zion Benton. Massengale, oh, she wanted Capers to catch that one cleanly. Well, Morgan Tuck taking care of older sister Taylor. Look at those numbers for Morgan Tuck. And we're just past the midway point of the second quarter. Yeah. These are numbers that some people might get in the game, in a great game. Now Robinson. Keeps it alive. Moore, the block with the ball, the body, the foul. So much height on this Bolingbrook team. You got Nia Moore in there at 6'3", Morgan Tuck at 6'2", so tough to attack the basket if you're Zion Benton with all that height in there. Going through the trees, Octavia Crump though, fearless in driving to the basket, trying to make things happen for Zion Benton. That's what you have to do. Low percentage perimeter shots aren't gonna do the ZBs any good right now. They have to keep attacking the basket as difficult it is, as it is and as tough as Bolingbrook is in the paint. Zion Benton has only made four out of 17 shots. That's 23 and a half percent on the other side. Bolingbrook 11 of 18. They're knocking it down at a 61 percent clip. Three for Hill. Nearly banked it in. How active has Morgan yeah. Tuck been tonight? Very, very aggressive on the boards, getting good position. She was surrounded on that play by white shirts and still managed to come up with the basketball. She is playing with a passion, a fire, an intensity that we just didn't see very much of last night. It's been a joy to watch her here and really play within herself and in her element. This is how she's used to playing, treating fans to such high quality basketball. No, it's an interesting comment. You're saying playing within herself. And yet here she is all over the floor, playing aggressive. That is within that, that's, herself. Yeah, that's right, that's her game. She is playing her game. What she's used to doing, pounding the boards, going strong inside, playing tough defense, the shot blocks that really spark her team and get the offense going. All over the floor is Morgan Tuck. I don't know, has she even come out of the game yet? I mean, she's been playing a lot of minutes too and still playing with uh, such great energy. Remember now, Morgan Tuck has one year left of high school. Sorry for all of you <laughs> high school basketball fans that thought you may send her off to University of Connecticut. Gina Wariema, the head coach at UConn, is going to like to see that number 44 in his UConn jersey. Yeah. That's the thing, I mean, you know, Bolingbrook loses Ariel Massingale and Taylor Tuck, but they return three starters and some of their key players off the bench. Ahead to Robinson, able to control it, can't find the glass. Robinson heard footsteps behind her. Bolingbrook was in hot pursuit with three players. Bolingbrook looking to attack. Zion Benton is able to get back. Massengale can't get the three and look out on the table as Rodriguez saves it to her older sister, Helena Rodriguez, with 2.15 to play here in the first half. And Zion Ben right now down by 24. As Crump looks to cut into that. More of the rebound. Relentless, that's what's going on right now. 
The flow continues up of Bell and Edwards. Massengill already six assists in this game. She is just eeny, meeny, miny, mo, picking a teammate, and they're knocking down shots. She is uh, really uh, patting the, the assist statistic tonight for herself. Teammates are shooting so well. This is Cattenhead. Yeah, there is a passion and drive here that, I mean, you saw it last night. Of course, the level of competition last night, there was still some nerves involved, but boy, Bolingbrook is cutting it loose tonight. Yep. They smell it. You know, so many great accomplishments for this team. Number one in the state, ranked nationally, and they want that added little item to put on their resume of back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back state champions. No large school has ever done it. That would be quite an accomplishment. They want that. Look at Massengale, defensive end to the offensive end, the block by Rodriguez. Now, you measure the, the job Massengale does, of course, by the points, by the assists. And you will see in the stat sheet at the end the number of steals. But, boy, she is dominating this game as much defensively as she is offensively. She really is. And she is all over Juanita Robinson. I think taking that as a personal challenge, saw what a great game Juanita Robinson had yesterday against Maine South. And Massengill has been on her quite a bit and really keeping her quiet. Robinson is out of the game here. Protect her with those three fouls with a minute to play in the half. Well, even handoffs are difficult for Zion Benton. Bolingbrook all over those two. Cam had nice catch from top. And that was an offensive foul as Ariel Massengale very much aware of the history in the making with the three-peat. She had these thoughts a couple of days ago. It didn't mean a lot. You know, a lot of people in Illinois can't say that that's been done. And to be able to leave here, you know, with that, knowing that I left the legacy in our program for the girls that, you know, are coming behind me and then to take that winning, the winning tradition on in Tennessee is a great thing. The only other team in girls basketball to three-peat was Tutopolis. They won three in a row in the late 80s in Class A. That was a stretch where the Wooden Shoes won four of five titles. Only Seneca undefeated Seneca fight and Irish disrupted that strength. So Bolingbroke looking to become the first large school to three-peat. They've got a pretty good leg up right now. You see the score, 37-11 with 30 seconds to play in the first half. Very frustrated bunch of players for Zion Benton. And as Helena Rodriguez hung her head for a moment, the senior Morgan Garrett was yelling at her teammates saying, let's go, let's go. And that's exactly the type of player Garrett has been, the vocal leader from the post position. The senior, so big, a big part of the revival for Zion Benton that saw this team, this program, only win seven games two years ago. And yet they trail here by 26. Massengill. Hangs. And the half comes to an end. So if you're going to pick one thing that didn't quite work out for Bolingbrook, it'll be the Mr. Massengale right here at the buzzer. Everything else, Raiders, 37 to 11 at the half. Only four points scored in that second quarter by Zion Benton. They trail 21 7 at the end of the first, outscored here 16 to 4 here in the second quarter. We're getting set for the award ceremony for the third place game. You're looking at the championship score. Raiders up big. It's time now for the IHSA Did You Know? Before becoming the 40th President of the United States, Ronald Reagan played sports and participated in the theater program at Dixon High School. Did You Know? Brought to you by Realtor.com. Search more than 4 million homes for sale on Realtor.com, the number one homes for sale website in the U.S. IHSA's presentation of the girls' class 3A and 4A championships are brought to you by Country Financial, what's your idea of financial security? And by the National Association of Realtors. When you're ready to buy or sell a home, contact a Realtor, a member of the National Association of Realtors. 
A busy day here at Redbird Arena. You see the third place game won by Springfield by 10 over Marshall. Then it was Montini going back to back 67 45 over Hillcrest. You just saw the awards presented to Maine South for their third place victory. And at the half in our 4A championship game, Bolingbrook leads Zion Benton 37 to 11. And Matt Rodewald caught up with the head coach of the ZBs, Tanya Johnson. All right, with head coach Tanya Johnson, a deer in headlights. It's the first time here. What happened in that first uh, first half for you guys? Well, it's uh, a lot of pressure. Um, Bowlingbrook, um, you know, outsizes us. I think at every position. Uh, I think nerves is playing a part of it, but. Bowling Book's a great team. We're just going to have to come back and do a better job handling the ball. How do you stop Morgan Tuck? I don't know that we can stop Morgan Tuck. So we'll see if we can take, make a dent in, there in the second half. Yeah, good luck, I coach. I think we just got to come back and we got to we just got to calm down a little bit. All right, good luck, coach. Thank Thanks. you. Well, hopefully they have had about 12 minutes and more in the locker room to do just that. We'll take a break. We'll come back. Get start for the second half right after this. A 26 point lead for Bolingbrook at the half just getting ready to start the second quarter Bolingbrook on top of Zion Benton Dave Bernhardt along with Patricia Babcock McGraw here at courtside. Let's take a look at your first half highlights subtitled the Morgan Tuck show total domination by Bolingbrook total domination by Morgan Tuck 22 points for the junior forward getting the job done going strong to the basket she even showed us her outside range here. Bolingbrook shot 48% from the field. A lot of it, easy shots like that by Morgan Tuck. They were 57% from three point range. Just incredible effort by Bolingbrook. And we come right back to start the second half. Nia Moore will start it for the Raiders. Alan Edwards gets a hip check by Morgan Garrett right in front of the official. There was no mistaking that one. Morgan Garrett will pick up her second personal foul. Three fouls on Robinson for Zion Benton. Nobody in any foul difficulty for Bolingbrook. No difficulties for Bolingbrook. <laughs> Drive by Kiera Ray. Way Ray used her body getting to the basket. Real, real nice move. Get the feeling here that Bolingbrook really would like to send a message here in and out for Robinson. Yep. A second half message. They certainly sent in the first half. Tuck leads the way. Morgan Tuck has done everything else, hitting three pointers, dominating inside, rebounding, might as well lead the break as well. Looking like a guard on that play, finding an open teammate. You know, a lot of people would say a 30 point difference here early in the third quarter. Boy, how good can Zion Benton really be? Well, folks, this is what Bolingbrook has done to nearly every single opponent this year. Domination just like this. In fact, Bolingbrook this season in addition to scoring over 90.7 times, six times, six times this season, they have held their opponents to under 20 points. Fallon Edwards. And you know, and you wonder too how much of that is the mystique factor. You know, Whitney Young didn't play into that. Wendy Young has a mystique factor of its own. And it was a close game, a battle to the end between those two teams. But Bolingbrook, as good as they are, and as much as they earn their victories by the talent that they have, they win a lot of ball games just by showing up. <laughs> this program is that strong and has that great of a reputation. And I have to say, I think their black jerseys just add to that. <laughs> yeah, they just look meaner. <laughs> Here's how the Bolingbrook Raiders got to this point, and this is just what we were talking about. 96-17, 85-33 in the regional, and then big wins over Naperville Central Bennett Academy. It was a 14-point win. That was their closest win of the season until last night when they defeated Whitney Young by a point in overtime, and a game the Raiders, now remember back, Bolingbrook trailed by five points in regulation with 65 seconds to play. Yeah. There is part of Raider Nation. You know, that's what makes last night's victory so much more impressive for Bolingbrook is that not only were they playing a good team, a 
in Whitney Young, an, another team that's ranked nationally. But you know, they're used to rolling over the competition. And, and when you are, are used to winning in that fashion, you're never really tested when you are. It's almost a shock to the system. And the fact that Bolingbrook was able to withstand that, keep their composure, keep their wits about them, it really shows a lot about the, the character of this team and the mental toughness that Bolingbrook has to be able to withstand that. Whitney Young was in control of the basketball game for a large portion of, portion of that second half. Only two losses for Bolingbrook this season. They came on back-to-back -back days late in December against Brea out of Olinda, California. That was a double overtime loss, 47-43. And then the next day, modern day from Santa Ana, California, in the Nike Tournament of Champions defeated Bolingbrook 61-48. Bolingbrook has not lost to an Illinois team since they dropped the state championship game to Whitney Young in 2008. That's 64 games. Morgan Tuck is that's her 10th and 11th free throw attempts of the night. Massagay will get right up on Robinson once again. I think both of those two players took tonight's individual matchup as a big challenge yeah. to each other. Rodriguez got caught in the air and she finds the range. Helena Rodriguez, the 5'6 senior. And it doesn't take wow. long the other way. Pinpoint passing on that break. Bolingbrook so quick in the fast break. Everybody running the floor. Morgan Tuck leading the way there. You love it when your big girl runs the floor. 26 points now for Tuck. 26 of the Raiders, 47. Tanya Johnson said she needed her team to calm down. They are being more patient in this half court set, moving the ball a little bit better. And Robinson will knock down the three. Her first points of the night. Tuck. They'll say that was a travel. Morgan Garrett says, hey, how about a hook in there? But the turnover will give it back to the ZBs. Morgan Tuck thought that that was a pretty move baseline coming up under the basket reverse layup. She wanted that for the highlight reel. How much in control has Bolingbrook been in this game? Head coach Tony Smith for the Raiders, not only has he not taken his sport coat off, he has left it buttoned. <laughs> for the entire game. <laughs> there he is, decked out in the red and black. Hasn't had to get too excited tonight, except for in a good way. He's calm, cool, and collected, just letting the game play itself out. His players are doing exactly what he wanted them to do, like he said, coming out and sending a message. We are the best team in the state of Illinois. No question about it. And we are one of the best teams in the country, no question about it. And with that comes the, the pressure to, to do it. You know, night in and night out when everybody is coming right after you with their best. Three minutes gone here in the third quarter. And again, it just continues for the Raiders. 47-16. I'm just trying to get kids to play hard. That's all. I'm just trying to uh, get them to play hard and give their best effort at uh, all times. That's it. And Tony goes on to say, you know, as long as my players play for me, I'm going to be yelling and pushing them. But once they're off playing in college, I'll be their biggest cheerleader. But until then, I'll be the one always on top pushing them. And he's also big about not wanting his players to read their press clippings. You know, keep it humble, just focus on basketball. There's time for that later. And this team does play with such an intense focus. And can you imagine what the practices are like? <laughs> well, you know, not only because of Tony Smith and, and his, his way of conducting things and pushing his players, but because of all the talent that they have on this team. I mean, they have got to have some very competitive practice. You've got 
Division one players all over the place on this team. The, the best of the best pushing each other and their teammates every single day. It's probably intensity from the moment they walk on that practice court. Capers on a nice drop down inside to Morgan Tuck. 28 points for Tuck off the assist from Cadriana Capers. Nice high-low post action, Bolingbrook scoring in every way possible. And they try to do it the other way, and Crump nearly gets it. Ooh. Wow. Big time collision right there. If you take a look over at the, the Bolingbrook bench, their, their school colors are red and black. It's very clear they're red and black. However, tonight, a little bit different color combination. You see a lot of red and their green. Oh, is that some sort of a Christmas gift that should be coming up in about a quarter and a half? I think maybe everyone else in the state is green with envy. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Wishing they were had some of the t players that Tony Smith has on his bench right now. Samantha Rodriguez. Samantha Rodriguez. She will become a bigger and bigger factor for Tanya Johnson and Zion Benton in the years ahead. Just a freshman. Caper so strong in there. Just relentless. This entire basketball team, all these Raiders. Just so hungry for the basketball. Going after every loose ball, every rebound. Really capitalizing on everything. Really maximizing their chances. Robinson's going to need some help. He got stuck in no man's land in the corner. Now Kayla Young will come in to replace Samantha Rodriguez. Young, a five foot five inch senior. Tanya Johnson will be so sad to see her seniors go. Obviously what they have done these last two years from a seven win season and a last place finish in the North Suburban Conference to 18 and nine last year. And this season coming into this game a 27 and six record. And here comes Massengale. Hill spots it. Helena Rodriguez. Robinson playing with three fouls, chucks it up and drills it. The Zion Benton fans just wanting so desperately for something to cheer for. Juanita Robinson, a great look there on the three pointer. Tanya Johnson greeting every one of her players on the floor as they come off as. That's beyond college range right there for Juanita Robinson. So feeling pretty good about themselves after knocking down a couple, getting over that 20 point barrier. Every basket becomes a victory right now, even though it's a 30 point difference. And what a great, <laughs> great time for people right there. A little frightening, but <laughs> we'll get past it. But the community of Zion Benton and the school and this is what a great rallying point this has been not just because okay you're playing the championship game but all the obstacles that you overcome to get here where you've come from yeah, the entire community I was uh, looking online today at some of the local newspapers up there and all the businesses talking about the support they wanting to show the ZBs the pictures of the marquees of some of the local businesses saying go lady ZBs now the entire town is excited. This doesn't happen very often up there. The team from Zion Benton advances downstate, obviously the first time ever for the girls basketball program. A rags to riches story, a Cinderella story for this program. It's been so exciting for Tanya Johnson to bring these girls down here. They've just had the time of their lives. This game obviously isn't working out quite as they had hoped. 
but they'll never forget the experience. And Matt Rodewald has more. You know, when you think about it, we mentioned this right at the start. Uh, Zion is just not familiar with getting down to this level, so they're going to throw everything they have into it. 2008, they did the same thing when they came down with the boys' basketball team uh, down towards Peoria. We'll see uh, uh, next week some teams down there, but uh, all sorts of businesses. Patricia, you mentioned it. Uh, how about Happy Land Pet Center and Beach Park? Got a little sign up there. Starlight Country Restaurant and Zion. They've got a little sign. Go ZBs. All the business and uh, in black and maroon you see a lot of colors through a town it is a football like atmosphere when you think about it for these kids getting downstate you know in line with that you know we we were down here last weekend for the class 1a and 2a tournament and you see a lot of that where the small communities just wrap themselves around the team so it really is so gratifying to hear stories like that here for the larger schools Morgan Tuck with 30 points here tonight. And we still have two minutes to play here in the third quarter. Tuck had 30 in the opening game of the sectional against Naperville Central, so added 10 rebounds that night. I love the fact that Zion Hutton is still showing so much fight. Octavia Crump trying so hard to get that offensive rebound, trying to out jump everybody from Bowling Brook going up hard just unable to corral that rebound but still showing that fight that aggressiveness inside trying to make something happen for Zion Benton. Great defense there by Crump on Morgan Tuck. Not an easy assignment. Crump covers some wow. ground. How about that being able to finish on the run like that for Octavia Crump. Good sequence for her. Evidently, Tony Smith not too thrilled about that last one. His coat is now unbuttoned. <laughs> Masson Gale tonight has been the distributor. She has one three-pointer. She'll dish it inside to Tuck. Count it. She's got a free throw coming up. 32 and counting. Well, Ariel Masson Gale obviously recognizing all night long who has a hot hand, and that's Morgan Tuck. 32 points going for 33 now. Ariel Massingale, 10 assists. You know, she was talking about the tradition that she has been so glad to be a part of at Bolingbrook, going for potentially the three state titles in a row. And why do you think a coach like Pat Summit, who knows something or two about tradition and dynasties herself, winning programs, recruited a player like Ariel Massingale, just a winner, down to the core, really the leader of this team ever since she stepped foot on campus, and set the tone for this program and its winning ways from the point guard position. She's going to continue on at Tennessee with that same winning attitude. Robinson with her eighth point in the quarter. Oh, look out. Essengale hits a slick spot on the floor, and down she goes, and one of the Zebes is down as well. It's a crump. crump. Looks like crump, yeah. She's okay, it appears. That three-point play by Morgan Tuck has put her in the Class 4A record book here at Illinois State University. This is the fourth year of the four-class series, and with their 10 points last night, 33 tonight, 43 total points breaks the record of 40 points scored in a tournament by an individual since we have switched formats. Here in this quarter, it's been an 11 point third quarter for Tuck. How about uh, this? 10 in the first, 12 in the second, 11 here in the third. Robinson, all eight of hers have come in this quarter. Right into the hands of Delacy Anderson into the game for the first time. Robinson just can't hang out. <laughs> it's been that kind of night for Zion Button. They knew when they saw the brackets all coming down, first of all, as a fifth seed in their sectional. I don't think Tanya Johnson, Frank Matucci, Maritza Morales, the coaches for Zion Benton, I don't think they, they had projected themselves out that all far. the way here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But once this whole matchup against either Bolingbrook or Whitney Young uh, emerged, uh, I think they knew what they were in for. 
Yeah. Talking about two elite teams in the country. Here's Massengale, one on one, and it'll be Rodriguez with the hold. Also into the game for Zion Benton right now is Keaton Stabenow. Both coaches getting some other players into the lineup, but it's going to be Massengale to try to close out the third quarter. As Robinson ends up in the Bolingbrook bench, she has been close to those players all night long. It's been a big night for Morgan Tuck, a big night for Bolingbrook, and they are just eight minutes away from repeating here at Redbird Arena. There is Morgan Tuck as she is having an outstanding night. You can start reprinting the record book and put her name in there. Hey, she passed her teammate Ariel, Ariel Massengale for the most 4A title game points. Now that's not so nice. 33 here tonight. Let's check in with Matt Rodewald. Yeah, 33 tonight. Obviously, it matches uh, anything in 4A and uh, a couple of more points. Let's see if she hangs in the game long enough uh, to get past 39. Anna Jones in Class 1A from Flanagan back in 2008. And uh, just for the record, Candace Parker had 32 in against Fenwick back in 2003. So she's done more than Candace has. Crump can't get that one to go. Boy, you start tossing out some great names when you start throwing out the Candace Parkers. And of course, we talk about Ariel Massengale to Tennessee, Morgan Tuck to Connecticut. It's, uh, I think it speaks to the quality of girls basketball in Illinois when you have that elite of player that we see down here every year. Well, Pat Summit was in the stands yesterday watching the semifinal game, and she said she loves coming here to recruit because of the way teams here in Illinois play basketball, the development of the players here, such great talent. Got a lot of talent in the city of Chicago and the suburbs. It's a hotbed for girls basketball. It always has been, and we talk about great players, all the great teams. And so about right about now that we need to start talking about where Bolingbrook fits in terms of dynasties and top-notch elite programs in the state of Illinois in the history of girls basketball here. You've got the Marshalls, the Main West, Stevenson's, Loyola's, Naperville Central, Whitney Young's, Bolingbrook right in there in that conversation and maybe at the top of that conversation, Dave. This program for the last six years has played in the state championship game, the seventh finals appearance for this program. I mean, that is pretty, pretty top-notch stuff. You talk about Candace Parker, you talk about where does Bolingbrook stand, the head coach for Naperville Central, who coached Candace Parker in high school. Andy Nussbaum, he just flat out says, he says, maybe with the exception of our team with Candace Parker, and he admits his, mm -hmm. he's biased, that this may be the best high school team he's ever seen. And yep. you talk about a team with Candace Parker, her coach says, yeah, I think we're still the best, but yeah. this may be the best. And I, there'd be few people that could argue with that. Best singular team, and then you have to start looking at the program as, as a whole. What has this program done over an extended period of time? And, and really, Bolingbrook has just been amazing in, in uh, Tony Smith's 10 years. Just a dominating competition here in Illinois. He's averaging 27 wins a year. Already have three state titles, including the last two. Could go for this three-peat, this elusive three-peat. That's got to be a conversation of where this team fits in Illinois history. And it's a good argument to put them right at the top. You know, and what's interesting about all of these comments is last night we were sitting in this exact same seat, and the Raiders were down by five yeah, points in were. regulation. They to were. Whitney Young before pulling it out in overtime. And you look at the person handling the ball right now, Ariel Massengale. Her last game, each of her four years of her high school career, has been a state championship game. Wow. Handling the ball, number 40, Charnese Williams for Bolingbrook. The bucket will go to Kennedy Cattenhead. Morgan Tuck still on the floor with 35 points, and she'll defend Garrett nicely off done off the glass. Now Tony Smith just has to figure out when and how will he take his senior, Ariel Massengale, out of the game. Remember Tuck, as much as we've talked about her, just a junior. 
think Tony may be waiting for one more flashy play. Here's a three ball left corner. Ring it up for DeLacy Anderson. Anderson. They keep coming off the bench. 63 30 coming up on five minutes to play. Lena Rodriguez will go to the free throw line. She wraps up her high school career. Rodriguez, a couple of free throws coming up. Here is last night. What a thriller this was. Bolingbrook, Whitney Young, two of the top ten teams in the nation. Bolingbrook found themselves down by eight. Ariel Massengale with a big game, and then into overtime we go. Here's the play that decides it. A foul call goes against Janae Thompson. It put Morgan Tuck at the free throw line. She made one of two missed a second intentionally. That desperation shot by Shanice Jenkins. No good. And with that, that sends Bolingbrook here a chance for the state title. And they are just five minutes away from accomplishing the three peak. <laughs> Timeout on the floor. 63 31. It is only a matter of time before the Raiders go one, two, three for state titles. And welcome back to Redbird Arena with this one pretty much decided. Let's look ahead to celebration situations coming up. Bolingbrook's going to celebrate this weekend. They're going to celebrate at 2 o'clock tomorrow at the school. Zion's got all sorts of things planned at 2 o'clock. Of course, you're going to celebrate the girls' basketball a rally. That will be again Sunday at 2 o'clock. But don't forget, Devin Dodds will be on her. That's the wrestling qualifier. Allegra Kotteman, that's the diving qualifier. And Dave and Patricia Renz Ibarra, the national air rifle shooting champion, will be honored at that rally on Sunday at 2 o'clock. So many different champions. I didn't even know that was a sport. But the Zebes could have used some precision shooting here in this game. How about that, huh? <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, well played. I, you know, you have to give it up, though, to we were talking about the Zion Bend community, but how about these students? You know, they sold out their allotment of 500 tickets. Of course, many more uh, ZB fans than that came and just bought tickets at the window. But, you know, the student body, four, Fan buses they brought down yesterday. All those people return and more. It looks like today they're in their white shirts, their state bound t shirts. So proud of their ZBs. I know the players so appreciate the support that they've gotten from their schoolmates and the community. It's a special time for Zion Benton. Great memories for these kids. And just, uh, you know, setting the stage for more success for Tanya Johnson. She's only in her second year at Zion Benton. Never could have expected this and just starting to get things rolling. She's been through it before, two state championships at Loyola. So she's she's on the verge of building something. Not even on the verge, she has built something already and it's just gonna get better up at Zion Benton. Exactly four minutes to play in this game and you know you can ask any of these players in the white jerseys Zion Benton ask them you know maybe in six months what was that score of that championship game they will not be able to tell you because it for them it truly does not matter see Tanya Johnson and her most emotional moment this year may not have been last night even though we saw tears starting to form in her eyes when she knew she was going to play for a state title but for Zion Benton Winning the regional on their home floor in her second year, that to her almost was the ultimate prize of this season. Yeah. She says that out of all the regional titles that she's won, and she's won a lot of them, that was the best one, the most memorable one, just because of where these kids have come from. Seven victories for this team just two years ago. Last year they won 18 games, and she thought in her first in her set first year that it would be a victory to win just more than seven maybe eight and they go out and win 18. So Morgan. this program's come a long way. Morgan Tuck still in the game until right now and she'll have a seat. She will leave with 36 points tonight. 36 points seven rebounds. 
Let's go to Matt. Last check, that's 122 points in state tournament games. That shatters teammate Ari Massengill's 101 points. That includes tonight and last night in all four classes with the four-class system. So for two games um, in each of her first three years, she's up to 122 points. Not anywhere near the old two-class records. Those are three games, and you're looking at 240-some-odd points, but very impressive in this format. Robinson will knock it down 13 points all in the second half. Remember, last night it was Tuck with 10 points. That was 10 below her average. So she's uh, 36 and 10, 46, uh, 23 points here in the final. She'll up that average a little bit. Yep. Pounding it hard is Charlonese Williams. Uh, no basket. She got hit in the face. Maybe poked in the eye, even. Morgan Garrett will fall out of this game, and she will get a warm, warm greeting on that Zion Benton bench as Charlie Williams. I think he got it right in the right eye. Morgan Garrett, seven points here tonight, the emotional leader of this team. Just always speaking out, getting her teammates up. She is going to be missed by Tanya Johnson, the senior. You know, you see a little emotion on her face. And a lot of folks are thinking, well, you know, she's just upset that they lose this game. Or maybe she's not so upset. <laughs> okay, she's all right. <laughs> I was going to say, so often it's the idea that the seniors play in their last game. This is it. For many people, it's their last organized basketball game, period. Well, you talk about a senior. Look who's coming into the game. Taylor Tuck, she's been out this game. She was the one who won the game for Bolingbrook against Whitney Young. Last night with her free throw, she hit the first one, missed the second one on purpose to let the clock run out, but she's been sitting out with an ankle injury. Ankle problem uh, occurred last night in the game with the, in a collision with Janae Thompson. A little bit uh, tender here today, and uh, Tony Smith figured, why risk it, especially when they got out to such a quick lead. He started um, Edwards, Fallon Edwards in her place. She did a nice job. Now Taylor Tuck gets that applause. Gets the, Tony Smith gets her into the game as a senior, her last game for Bolingbrook, just to say that she played in the state championship game. You know, and that's really interesting how it all came about because she became a substitute free throw shooter yeah. for Charanese Williams, who goes to the bench, rubs her eye a little bit, yeah. and Taylor Tuck misses the free throw, and of course is replaced by Williams. And the irony is, Last night, her yep. very last play, she missed a free throw on purpose right. with 1.7 <laughs> seconds left after hitting the game winner. Well, right. She hit the one that mattered. You know, it's, it's a shame that we didn't get to talk about her more. Obviously, been so integral in the success of Bolingbrook this season and for uh, many of the last few seasons, averaging eight points a game is going to be going to Illinois next year. One of the best three-point shooters on this team is Taylor Tuck. And her and Morgan Tuck were thinking about going to the same college for a while. You know, the sisters trying to keep it going, getting to play another four years together, but just kind of found themselves interested in different things, a different style of program. So Taylor's going to Illinois, and of course Morgan's going to Connecticut in two years. Just a junior, Morgan Tuck, 36 points in this game, will be back next year. In the cat and head with that last basket is coaches now starting to one by one replace some of their players. Three pointer banked in for Zion Benton's <laughs> Caitlin Stabenow. You know, Tati Johnson can be sitting with her head in her hands right now, but she's up. She's enjoying it. Big smile on her face. Cheering for Caitlin Stabenow, hitting that three pointer. Just a part of enjoying this experience for Zion Benton, even though this hasn't been much of a game from the very start. He's still trying to enjoy every last morsel of this game and just being down here at Redford Arena. I was going to say the ZB's maxed out. Absolutely yeah, maxed out. They wanted so desperately to win that super sectional to get a chance to play together one more week, and they did. Now Juanita Robinson will leave along with Octavia Crump. On the other side for Bolingbrook, they want a regional, they want a sectional, they want a super sectional. Of course, it's a common practice to cut down the nets following each of those victories. 
but as Tony Smith says, you know, we do aim a little bit higher here at Bolingbrook High School. We only cut down the nets on Saturday nights, not a Thursday night, not a Monday night, but a Saturday night. That's when we cut down the nets. And of course, what happens on Saturday nights, Dave? The only time you play in a Saturday night is when you play here in a state championship game. That's aiming high. <laughs> not much higher. But not a lot of nets have been saved by Bolingbrook. <laughs> Now the Zion Benton fans wanted a bucket right there. Stamina now in the middle of all of that. She takes a look. Does that foul on me? Ariel Massengale, tournament career. How about tonight? 11 assists tonight for a record 14 in a tournament both of those records for record career record assists uh-huh <laughs> those all belong to that lady who was having a good smile right now here you go massengale <laughs> and there we go if you're if you're really a hardcore true down to the core point guard you're loving the fact that you're getting 11 assists. And Ariel Massengill has only three points, well off her average of 14 points per game, but I have a feeling she couldn't give a care about that. Right. She loves getting the ball to her teammates, loves feeding Morgan Tuck as she did all night tonight. She's very happy with her 11 assists. Thank you very much. Well, that was a great picture moments ago. The a team that is down by 27 points here in a state championship game just smiling and hugging and just soaking it all in as to what they've done here this season. Final minute of play for a championship game. Alyssa Clark will go to the free throw line. Still coaching the last minute. Clark, a senior in the book. Boy, you hope so badly for moments like that. Look at that Zion Benton bench. <laughs> Get that senior who doesn't play much. She will have her name in the book forever. Tonight, this one belongs to the Raiders. 21 7 lead in the first quarter, a dominating first quarter, first half. It was stretched, and it just keeps on coming. And Naya Moore with the long jumper. The student section for Zion Benton has been up all night. There are adult fans on their feet, Bolingbrook fans just waiting for the final 27.5 to tick off. Morgan Franklin to shoot. One and one. Franklin points in the book. Love you, Morgan! <laughs> <laughs> she celebrates the air ball. <laughs> oh, this is awesome. What a great time these kids are having. And now the Bolingbrook Raider fans will rise. No large school has ever done it in girls basketball in Illinois. And that is go back to back to back. The Bolingbrook Raiders, a three-peat. Here in 2011, your 2011 for a chance. Total domination by Bolingbrook. What a spectacular effort all the way around, from top to bottom, from start to finish. Congratulations to them. It's really left no doubt about which team is the best team in the state of Illinois and arguably the country. And Zion Batten, hats off to them. What a spectacular season they've had, a rags to riches story. They've been the toast 
of Bloomington Normal this weekend. You've got to love their story coming out of nowhere. Seven wins two years ago, getting to the state finals and had a great time. Bolingbrook plays a national schedule. They'll travel all over the country they have, but Tony Smith says, you know, we play all year for the state tournament so we can say the best team in the state. And whether it's one, two, or three in a row, the celebration means the same. And girls basketball is so strong here in the state of Illinois. Being state champs here in this state says a lot about your program. Now the biggest challenge will be for Kurt Gibson and the other IHSA folks to get everybody organized here for the awards ceremony. Let's go to Matt Rodewald. You are now the record holder and assist, the most unselfish player in tournament history. How about that? It's a great feeling, you know, this is what it's all about. Um, you know, teammates came out ready to play and played a great game tonight. How much fun has this season been for you guys? It's been a lot of fun. It's been a lot of ups and downs, you know, but in the end, we came together as a team. All right, Ariel, congratulations. We'll talk to Morgan real quick, your teammate. A big hug for both of them and just utter domination inside. Um, yeah, you know, our coach um, told us that we need to dominate the post, and so my teammates got me about where I needed it. Was that ob obviously, there was the game plan from the start, attack from the get-go. Yeah, um, yesterday we didn't come out that great, so today we definitely want to show that we can get to the rim and we can finish shots. Was it tough to get up for this one, knowing that it was young, you had all week to think about it on Friday night, a quick turnaround, and someone you didn't know? Um, I don't think it was hard at all. I mean, we, this has been our goal since the beginning of the season to win state, and so we knew that we we're going to have to come out, not take this team for granted because they're a great team. So we're excited the whole time. You get to come back and do this one more year. Yes, I hopefully I'll be right here. All right, we'll see you then. All right, congratulations, Morgan Tuck. Quite possibly the best player in Illinois we've seen in a long time. She's putting a stamp on it tonight. And again, she's got another year to do it. Well, let's go over to Jeff Fritzen now for the awards for tonight's championship game. Illinois High School Association Board of Directors members, Dr. Jeanette Knuckles of Normal Community and Dan Klett of Wakanda. Let's meet the ZBs of Zion Benton High School who finished the season in second place with a record of 27 wins and seven losses. First meet, the superintendent of Zion Benton, Chris Clark. Principal, Brian Curtin. Athletic director, Lonnie Bible. Athletic trainer Dale Boyle. Head coach Tanya Johnson. Assistant coach Marita Morales. Assistant coach Frank Matucci. Assistant coach Julie Sexton. Assistant coach Dennis LaBelle. Assistant coach Brent Hall. You got it, right Assistant coach Mary Just. Manager Kim Rossman. Manager Becky Dezekin. Manager Jocelyn Rodriguez. Manager JC Kalavik. And the ZB squad members, number three, Octavia Crump. Number four, Morgan Franklin. Number five, Helena Rodriguez. Number 10, Caitlin Carter. Number 11, Kayla Young. Number 12, Angela Harris.
Number 15, Caitlin Stabenow. Twenty one, Samantha Rodriguez. Twenty three, Juanita Robinson. Thirty three, Alyssa Clark. And number thirty four, Morgan Garrett. And now let's meet the Raiders of Bolingbrook High School who finished the season in first place with a final record of 29 wins and two losses, winning their third consecutive state championship. Principal James Mitchum Jr. <laughs> Athletic Director Alec Anderson. Trainer, Maddie Kaminskis. Head coach, Anthony Smith. <laughs> Assistant coach, Janae Graham. Assistant coach, Carter Larry. Assistant coach Aaron Woods. Assistant coach Evan Burkott. Manager Nick Wunschel. Manager Lenise Branch. And the Raiders squad members, number three, Kennedy Cattenhead. Number five, Nia Moore. Number 10, Anaya Moore. Twelve, Sherelle Hill. Fourteen, DeLacy Anderson. Number fifteen, Taylor Tuck. Number twenty two, Ariel Massengale. Twenty four, Fallon Edwards. Number 30, Kiara Ray. Thirty-two, Allie Hill. Number 40, Sharonice Williams. Forty-four, Morgan Tuck. 50, Cabriana Capers. And now will Coach Johnson and the Zion Benton captains please step forward to receive the Class 4A second place trophy from Dr. Knuckles. Coach Smith and the Bolingbrook captains, please step forward to receive the Class 4A first place trophy from Mr. Clip.
And there you go, the Bolingbrook Raiders, your 2009, 2010, and that trophy right there counts for 2011 state champions in Class 4A. Dave Bernhardt, along with Patricia Babcock McGraw, your final thoughts on this one, Patricia? Well, I just think even though this was a pretty lopsided margin here, fun to watch this game because we were really a part of history for Zion Benton the first time that they ever were here down at the state finals. The best season ever for Zion Benton. Such an exciting ride for them. And of course, for Bolingbrook, witnessing the three-peat, the first ever for a large school in Illinois. I really feel that not only are we seeing one of the best teams in the state in Illinois this year, but maybe in Illinois ever, one of the best programs ever. Trisha, been great sitting alongside you here the last two weekends. We've gotten four state champions in. Uh, Thanks a bunch, and uh, what a way to go out with uh, all the history that you had just indicated between Zion Benton and Bolingbrook. So that'll do it for us here courtside here at Redbird Arena. Let's send it back upstairs. Matt Rodewald wraps things up. All right, Dave, Patricia, thank you very much. Patricia, wonderful having you part of the broadcast, and Dave, we'll see you next weekend at Carver Arena. So it goes. David took out the stone and slung it at Goliath, and Goliath swatted it away with the backhand. Nothing even close. So one of the more thoroughly dominated championship performances as we've seen in Illinois state history. Congratulations to Bolingbrook and to Montini, our champions here today at Redbird Arena. We have more championship action coming up next weekend at Carver Arena. So for everybody, Lee, Sarah, Dave, and Patricia, our wonderful production crew, our executive producer, D Doug Brown, and of course, Marty Hipman and everybody with the IHSA. I'm Matt Rodewald. Thank you for joining us on a wonderful Saturday of basketball. We'll see you in Peoria next weekend on the IHSA television network. Good night, everyone.